Hi there, and welcome to this lecture. In this course section, we will be mostly working with Perl script files. However, before we proceed with looking at Perl file structure, I just wanted to quickly show you how you can run Perl through a command line interface. Now, in order to run Perl through a command line interface, you can type Perl space minus E for execute, then single quotes or double quotes. I usually tend to use single quotes because with double quotes you can interpolate variables and let's use single quotes for this example and let's do something like print which is going to print something to a terminal double quotes so they don't interfere with our wrapping single quotes of our Perl code and say hello and let's also add a backslash n and the backslash n is simply a new line so if we run this by hitting return we're going to see hello printed to our terminal now, the alternative how you can run this is with capital E. And what capital E does is simply enables some of the Perl core features. We're going to look at some of these features in uh, next lectures, but for now, let's explore a very simple and handy one, which is called say. And this say feature is simply adding a new line at the end of whatever we're printing. So if we run this code again, we're going to see hello, new line followed by another new line. So it's all automatically adding a new line at the end of whatever we're printing. Now, if we remove this new line, which we added in the string, we're just going to see a single new line, which is printed after or hello. If I would try to run this with lowercase e, I'm gonna see an error. And that's going to say that there is something wrong at line one. And if we forgot to declare say, well, technically, yes, we didn't declare say, and the say command wasn't recognized because we didn't enable features. So Perl didn't know what say means and what it is supposed to do. You might be wondering, why would this be useful in general? Why would I be running these one-liners? Well, sometimes writing full script file might be an overkill. Maybe you just want to quickly parse some input via Perl. In this case, writing a script file is probably not the best solution. Just to give more elaborate example, and don't worry about the syntax, we will look at it in the future lectures, but let's do something like Perl, minus E, let's do capital E, then single quotes, where we can add our Perl code, let's say while, which is a loop, and then opening and closing parentheses, let's add this diamond operator, which is taking an input, then opening and curly braces, for executing our while block logic, and let's add something like say, you see, or uppercase, and let's use this dollar sign underscore. And this dollar sign underscore is simply the current context the while loop is receiving and what we are working on. So but to put it simple, it's a while loop which takes an input from our terminal, it runs indefinitely, and is going to print whatever we're giving or script and uppercasing it. Well, it's uppercasing it and then printing it out. So if we run this, we're going to see that nothing happens. And this is because our program now is waiting for an input. But if I do something like hello, lowercase, it's return, I'm going to see uppercase hello printed out. And that's what I talked about. Basically, our program runs, takes an input, it uppercases the input and prints it out. Now, of course, there can be hundreds of other more useful scenarios, such as listing files, parsing file names, replacing file extensions, so on and so on. The scenarios really depends on the use case. But now you know how you can run Perl through a command line interface if ever you need to. I hope you found this lecture useful and I'll see you at the next one.